Y ahora, pues, tenéis la oportunidad de, de preguntarle, pues, todas vuestras preocupaciones o, o intereses que tengáis. Yo tengo aquí un, un, ya un listado de preguntas que la gente pues, ha ido introduciendo, pero os doy oportunidad a las personas que estáis aquí, en vivo y en directo, de priorizaros a vosotros primero si queréis hacerle alguna, alguna pregunta. Hello. Esp espera un momento, Mario, porque está hablando. Hi, Jonathan. So, we, we begin with the question. Hi, Jonathan, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes, thank you. Oh, oh perfect. Um, okay, uh, I've just, uh, I've got two questions because I've been using uh, packed um, for a while. Uh, I am the director of a private clinic here in the north of Spain. And uh, the first question is, um, if you have any, any tips, any ideas of how to convince the parents, the families of changing the, the, the way of they, that they approach a, a, um, a private clinic or any, any resource, in order to, to use PAC, because many times the parents come to us and they want someone to work directly with the child. Not, not they, they, you know, they don't know the method, and it's, it, we find it quite difficult to convince them. That would be the first question. Yes, um, it's true that I'm getting an echo, let me just, that's all right. It's true that this method of work um, involves a certain cultural shift from, you know, what's traditionally been done in autism treatment. And I don't think your experience is um, uh, uh, unusual at all. Um, you know, there's been a a sense that um, parents want to believe in the, um, that they want to have an expert working with their child uh, and um, to some extent hand over to them to make the difference. Um, and, um, you know, I think this cultural change is really quite a profound one. And I think what I would say to parents usually is that you love your child, you're wanting to be the best parent you can be, and you are parenting them 24-7 anyway. So uh, what we are proposing is to work with you to help your parenting be more satisfying, rewarding, and effective for you. Um, parents sometimes, you know, will say that they are too busy, um, and uh, that they don't want extra burden, but really I think what, what needs to be explained is that we are just working with you to uh, make your parenting more effective. And once you have um, seen how this works and felt the effect of it, uh, it will, for most parents, this is a very positive experience. So it's that sort of cultural shift that I think is is needed and um yeah it is a change but our experience all over the world doing pact has been that once parents just begin uh, they really do um get what this is about and um find it um very rewarding okay <laughs> okay thank you yes I, i'm convinced of that because as soon as they started then they never want to finish it they want to carry on with it. <laughs> um, my, my other question is, 
uh, regarding the, the other program that you were explaining this morning, because it's, for me it's been the first time listening about it, the IBAS. Um, is that I, I was convinced that with the PACT program, we were able as well to use it with children that were not um, uh, diagnosed yet. And from today's, uh, from your um, lecture, I thought uh, that maybe we, we need to, to make changes. Uh, and it seems that PACT is more for children that have the diagnosis or, um, well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Yes, thank you for that question, and I can clarify. So, you don't need to change what you're doing. Um, we do use PACT pre-diagnosis as well. Um, I think the main distinction is actually a, an age distinction, or a developmental age distinction. So, the iBASIS was really designed for the early stages of development. So up until, let's say, two years of age, um, and then you, you kind of adjust that according to the child's developmental progress, of course. But um, you need, uh, it's just adapted for that very early stage of development in infancy when you need to address slightly different things. But we use some, um, the PACT intervention, I mean, most children who present at the moment are older than two in most countries. Um, and um, so PACT is perfectly reasonable to use pre-diagnosis for those. We do it ourselves. Otra de la pregunta ha sido si la, la investigación nos dice que a veces combinar dos métodos por ejemplo, pues un método global evolutivo con un método más de empoderamiento familiar como PAT, si se puede hacer, no se puede hacer, desde su bagaje y experiencia, ¿qué opina sobre ello? Ok, Beatrice, sorry, you, you will have to repeat the question. I got, okay. it got all confused. Um, desde su experiencia, ¿cómo valora el hecho de poder combinar dos métodos a la vez? Es decir, un método global más comprensivo, pero desde la vertiente evolutiva, como puede ser el modelo de Denver, combinado con un modelo más de, de empoderamiento familiar, como puede ser el PACT. To combine two interventions, one in a comprehensive way, more directive, like ASDM, and the other one like PACT. Uh, thank you for this question. Um, it's certainly the case that we have um, uh, children for whom who, and families who've received both PACT and um, more behavioral learning methods like ESDM or ABA. Um, it's, it's possible. I think that there is a fundamental difference between the two approaches uh, in terms of the process of change that is advocated in each. So this is what we call the logic model of therapy the process by which change is supposed to happen. And the, uh, although the two interventions can in some ways seem rather similar on the surface, actually underneath there are very different assumptions about how change happens and the mechanism that the therapist induces. Um, so working with two very different fundamental approaches like that can be a bit confusing for parents um, I think the kind of umbrella approach that is used in ESDM, which I appreciate, is, is comprehensive, it addresses a lot of different um, areas of development, is most useful in a, a kind of um, didactic um, education context in lots of ways. Um, but, um, uh, and I suppose the other complementarity 
is that if you look at the actual research evidence, um, where um, behavioral interventions like ESDM actually report change is essentially in um, um, what we call structural language. That is the amount of vocabulary the child has um, and the, um, their sort of sentence construction. So it's a very, the, the, the actual, if you look at the papers published on ESDM, that is actually where the main effect um, has been shown. Um, whether those effects actually are long lasting or whether they are, as it were, rote learning is hard to know from the um, studies, but it, it is an interesting contrast with what you see in PACT. Uh, in PACT, we get improvements in what we call pragmatic social communication. Um, uh, we get improvements in parent rated language, but when we use laboratory measures of language, standardized measures of structural language, we don't get change. Um, so there is a bit of a distinction there. You could say that the two approaches might be quite complementary, and it raises interesting theoretical questions about how autistic children learn language, actually, which have not really been enough explored. But um, uh, so I would remain sort of neutral about it. I think some parents can manage both kind of approaches, and some find it rather confusing uh, because they are really rather different in their fundamental assumptions. So it probably is about um, trying it and seeing. Um, Jonathan, there is a, another question um, about if there is any, if the, whether there's been any uh, experience on using the method PACT on, uh, in an in a educational center as a part of the, um, you know, of, of the setting. Um, this is a question from a professional that is working with uh, children around three years old. Yes, I'm so sorry. I missed the first part of your question. Could, would you mind repeating it? I'm really sorry. Yes, of course. Um, the question is about if there is any experience about using the method PACT in an educational uh, center. Um, and this question is from yes. someone that has been working and is working uh, with children that are around three, three years old. Yes, yes, we do have experience um, of this. And um, we did adapt the PACT method to be used by teaching assistants in schools um, and also by um, preschool teachers uh, or educators. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've studied it in a trial that we published uh, earlier this year. The, uh, there are definitely um, uh, challenges in implementing a, a, an intervention like this in schools. Uh, um, it's partly the nature of the school day, the fact that if you're going to do an intervention like this, you need to um, have the child come out of the classroom and to have time with the teaching assistant on their own. Um, and there is the problem in schools of a turnover of teaching staff, uh, which makes it um, often rather, I mean, about 60% of the children in our study changed um, teaching assistants during the period of the study, often more than once. And so that's difficult to get continuity. So, we did get um, positive effects. The teaching, effect, the teaching assistants liked the intervention, and we got positive effects on the way that the child interacted with the teacher, uh, that dialdic response I talked about. But it, was a, it wasn't as strong a response as when we work in the clinic. And um, so I'm, I'm a little bit uh, ambivalent about this. In some ways, I think that the best uh, interventions in the educational setting are those that are embedded in the classroom, that actually uh, just, they are embedded every day in classroom experience. Uh, and if you look at the evidence, there isn't much very good research into this, but the evidence that there is 
is that those embedded interventions, which teachers do every day, all day, every day, as part of their curriculum delivery, not surprisingly, um, have a bit more effect than something like pulling packed into the school and uh, as a sort of separate thing, if you know what I mean. So we've done it and it works okay, um, but the effect is not as strong as when we work in the clinic. Right. Okay. Um, another question is, what's the main difference uh, between the two models, PACT and IMPACT? Um, well, the, the IMPACT model is not something that I'm involved with at all. This is an American model. It, it, it's slightly confusing and it has a rather similar name. It's actually a totally different intervention. Um, and uh, it's got a totally different um, evidence base. Uh, it hasn't been tested actually very much uh, in you know, proper clinical trials. So it's difficult for me to comment, to be honest. I don't know the impact intervention really that well. It wouldn't be fair for me to comment on it. But it, although the name sounds similar, they are actually very different interventions. And I'm sorry that's rather confusing, <laughs> but um, that's, that's how it is. The, um, the, the, uh, I think when they named their intervention impact, um, it was around the time we published the first PAC trial, if I remember. But anyway, it so happens that the names are very similar. Yes, okay. Uh... There is a, a question here in the public. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're doing the micro. Hello? Yeah? Uh, Hello. Hi there. Um, I was wondering, since this intervention is very naturalistic and parent-driven, I was wondering if, if you've ever used it in polyadic environments where maybe both parents are interacting and how they in a way, support their child, or maybe other family members uh, participating in the in interventions. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, certainly in ordinary clinical practice with PAC, we often work with both parents together, or parents alternatively. I, there, there has been a huge cultural change in parenting practice, certainly in the UK, and I think um, elsewhere over the last 15 years, fathers are much more involved than they used to be and want to come in for intervention. So in clinical practice, uh, we often do that and work with two parents either simultaneously or separately. Um, um, so, for instance, you know, they, both parents might be working and they might want to alternate coming in to the intervention. So we, we, are, we are flexible about that. Uh, in the research studies, you have to be more uh, uh, constrained because you have to make the research experiment, you know, um, rigorous. And so we've not allowed that within the research studies. But in the, the clinical work, yeah. Um, in terms of the wider extended family, we've not worked directly with the wider extended family really, although sometimes grandparents will wish to come in too. What we hope for is that as parents, the primary caregivers uh, get familiar and understand the process and, and feel skilled with it, this will naturally then um, ripple out to the rest of the family. It seems inevitable that that should happen in terms of the family culture. Uh, and that would also go, because people often ask about siblings. How, would, how should siblings be brought into this? And we think that this will become a, a matter of family culture that the siblings will pick up. Uh, and when we do evaluation of family environments, which we do, we have a measure of at what the parents feel about the family environment after the treatment, the parents report that the family culture 
has changed um, and, and improved from their point of view. So that's the way we approach that. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add uh, a, another question to that. Was maybe more related not only to these, like, um, yeah, extending these um, this approach into the family and how all the other members relate to the child, but rather account for the complexity of uh, social interactions where maybe dyadic interactions are common, but maybe not the only type of interactions the child is involved. So, uh, yeah, how can we, like, if these interventions also targets these very triadic, like more people interacting and developing engagement in these more complex contexts? I don't know if I made myself maybe more Yes, no, yeah, no, I understand. I think that y what you have to remember is that for this intervention to work, and this is, this is an important point. We think the video feedback method and the, the rather uh, focused and intense work that happens within video feedback is very important. Um, if you, for instance, and that's very individualized, and it, it, we think that it, that individualized video feedback is key to the effectiveness of this intervention. If you look, for instance, at group interventions, which um, work with a lot of parents all at once, you know, um, they, they're really the evidence from the literature on that is that they are really not so effective. So to really get the effect that we are showing impact, as far as I understand at the moment, you need this more focused, individualized video feedback work. It's not easy to do this, uh, to get a change in long-term child development. It's, it's, it, it really is quite a technical business. Then when you ask about, well, all the complexity of child interactions in the real world, um, how can you account for all that? I, I think I would say that what we ex hope and expect is that the child will be able to generalize what they pick up in this very focused dyadic context and generalize it themselves into those other inter inter interventions, interactions. Um, so that we are hoping that, that there's a naturalistic extension into the complexity of ordinary communication. And we see evidence of that when we um, speak to teachers in schools in our follow-up of the PAC cohort, they actually, sh s th there is a difference between the, the children who had been treated with PAC six years previously and those who hadn't. And that's, and the teacher reports show a difference. It's not a huge difference, but there is definitely a difference that one can see in the, in the data. We've published this. So, you know, I think a lot of this just happens in a naturalistic developmental way once you get a core process going well. So I think that's how I'd answer your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think there was another question there. Mm, hola, se escucha. Sí, sí que se escucha. Hola. Eh, quisiera saber cuánto tiempo requieren los padres en la interacción diaria con el niño, en la práctica de lo que aprenden en PACT para que realmente esto tenga un impacto positivo en el desarrollo del niño. Y luego hago otra pregunta. Ok, thank you. So what we um, recommend, what we ask parents to do is 30 minutes a day of focused practice with their child. We recognize that families are very, you know, busy and parents are busy, etc. Uh, and not all parents always will achieve that every week. But that is what we ask for. And when we do the therapy, we are keen to hear back from the parents about uh, their experience of doing that during the week in between sessions. 
uh, or two weeks in between sessions. Uh, and any difficulties or experiences they've had. But generally, we're looking at half an hour a day of focused time with the child. Gracias. Aló. Y la segunda pregunta, si han encontrado diferencia en los resultados de familias provenientes de diferentes niveles culturales. Yo vengo de Latinoamérica y las familias con las que trabajo tienen una gran diversidad en, sus, en, la, en los niveles educativos de los padres. Entonces, quisiera saber si hay diferencia en los resultados según el nivel educativo de los padres. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question and a very, very important one. Um, when we started this work, there was a, a response from some people that this kind of method might work with highly educated, uh, like middle class sort of parents, uh, but might, might not work with other kinds of parents. And we were very keen to, we didn't believe that that would be the case actually, and we were very keen to check out on this. So, uh, we had very uh, detailed measures of social economic status, ethnicity, culture, language use in the home, um, that we took at baseline in our trials, and we checked to see whether there was any difference in the effectiveness of the treatment according to social economic level or etc. Uh, and the answer is in the PAC trial there was no difference. So that uh, we looked specifically at whether the parents could use video feedback in the way that we do in PAC across social class, educational level, financial level, etc. and culture. And there was there was no discernible difference. So what we think we're tapping into is some really fundamental parenting processes that are common across um, humanity um, and are independent of those kind of social class. The same has been true with all the work we've done in South Asia. So we've done a lot of work adapting this method in India and what we find there is the same thing, but the very different cultural context, as long as you adapt the method to the cultural context, then um, actually you get equivalent result. So there is something universal about the, what we're tapping into. And um, uh, I don't believe that there is any big distinction across social class or culture. Of course, there are constraints, there are problems for um, people in very stressed areas in accessing any help at all or in getting um, uh, the environment in which to do the work and all those kinds of things. But the actual core treatment doesn't seem to be any different. Um, another question has been what about parents who have autism themselves or autistic traits? And the answer to that is that uh, we can do this treatment successfully with them as well. Uh, it is slightly more difficult to get the change, but you'd still get change. And we adapt the treatment according to what we call the parent's learning style. Uh, and um, if the a parent is on the autistic spectrum themselves, we adjust to the learning style of that in the way we deliver the therapy. ¿Se me oye? Sí. Eh, yo quería pedirles si es posible que nos pusiera algún ejemplo del feedback que le dan a las familias en, cuando ven los vídeos. ¿Qué tipo de pautas dan para enriquecer la interacción? Ok, thank you. Um, so, uh, 
the the way that we do that is um, obviously set out in great detail in the uh, in our um, intervention manual, uh, and um, obviously when professionals learn the intervention, then a lot of time is spent on exactly um, those things. But in general terms, um, and and also I should say that the PACT intervention, well also iBASIS, are developmentally staged so that what you start off with uh, as a focus is on, for instance, a, a core mutual engagement. Before you do anything else, you're interested in that core mutual engagement um, of, of kind of attunement and synchrony before you start trying to build in um, uh, sharing of emotion or language, etc. So we, we, we take a staged approach. Uh, and so what you're actually focusing on with the parent varies according to where you are in the intervention itself, which stage you are at in the intervention. Um, and uh, the parents move from the beginning stages through to later stages of the intervention, depending on progress and the, um, the, the, the situation of their child. So some child with severe learning difficulties will only progress through a few stages, for instance. Other child with, with, good, with good potential cognitive skills and language will go right through to the end of treatment, which is really about um, quite sophisticated language interaction. So um, what we focus on um, with parents in the video feedback depends where you are in the intervention. But um, I, I think a, a core principle, certainly at the beginning, is for the parent to use the video feedback to watch their child's, watch their child's communication, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, um, uh, see ways in which they may be communicating that they might not have realized in real time with the child. So when you're looking on, that's the great advantage of the video feedback is you can look at it in, in reflection and uh, see things you wouldn't see normally. Um, so you look at your, your in encouraging the parent to look at moments where the child may be intentionally communicating, verbally or non-verbally, with you. Then you're interested in focusing on what kind of communication that might be, so that you're really helping the parent decode the child's communications, um, which are often rather difficult to understand in neurodiverse children and and that's the point that's where the interaction is compromised often early on so we're um, improving that by helping the the parents awareness their watching uh, and understanding of the child's intentional communication uh, and we look for moments of that in the the video and then we're interested in how the parent responds to that uh, and the parent can watch themselves responding and see when they're responding uh, uh, like usefully and when they may be cutting across the child or not letting the child or putting their own agenda on the child so that the, we, we help the parent look at their own behavior as well. And very soon the parent gets to realize the kind of behaviors that they can do that really um, um, reinforce and pull out their child's communication and respond to it. And that's the moment when they start to feel that the child is more spontaneously um, uh, initiating communication with them. And they don't have to go uh, keep going after the child to try and get them to, to engage. The child is actually spontaneously engaging. And that moment uh, then is often what we think of as a light bulb moment in the therapy, often around session three or something like this, when the parent suddenly realizes the child is actually wanting to communicate with them. And this for a parent is a wonderful moment. They start to feel, and they've often not felt this before with their autistic child. And they, they feel the child actually is there as another person in the room who wants to communicate. 
and they and that sh often changes a huge amount about how they feel about the situation and makes them very encouraged uh, and 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 feel much more related to their child. So that's a huge um, first step that we can um, get for for the parent uh, that sense of of, of, of relatedness and engagement with the child as a person. So, and then after that, then we move on to more, uh, like, if you like, sophisticated, or well not sophisticated, but um, detailed things to do with, um, uh, like, uh, social anticipation and um, um, other things that induce a child's interest and engagement further, and then language mapping and and then we talk more about um, communication and language mapping so i hope that's helpful uh, it's difficult to be comprehensive in the answer but it that's the sort of focus that we have as we start off the intervention okay uh, the, there is another question regarding the age of the children that you can use um packed with um can you use it with uh, children older than six years old? And also, uh, has it been, um, have you done any research about it? Um, yes, so thank you. Um, clinically, um, broadly speaking, we feel we can go up to 10 years old working with, with children using the PAC model. Um, We've not worked with children in, in the teenage years. We don't think it's an appropriate model for teenagers. But up to around 10 years old, um, we think it's per perfectly possible to do this, particularly with children who um, are um, more at an early language stage. Uh, for children who are um, really very fluent in language, um, it, it may, the, the, the model is perhaps slightly compromised, it's possible, but you have to adjust it a bit more. Um, have we done research with those older children? Yes, we have. So um, in our work in India, um, the age range of children was from two till 10. And uh, we got the same kind of effects um, on the dyadic interaction as um, we get in the UK with the younger children. And um, in our most recent PAC trial in the UK, uh, which was, I mentioned, which was partly in schools as well as at home, um, called PAC-G and uh, generalized PAC, uh, there we had children from two till 10. Uh, and we were able to work successfully with uh, that age range. And we showed in that trial that again, that we got this good dyadic um, response. Uh, within the dyad, so yeah, it is. Um, it's possible to work with children to, with children up to about ten years of age. We think. Hola, muchas gracias por lo que estás compartiendo, porque está siendo bastante inspirador y motivador. Y tengo dos preguntas. Una de ellas es cómo ves eh, la implantación de un sistema aumentativo de comunicación y el PACT. Si recomiendas primero hacer todas la, las sesiones de PACT y si no ha desarrollado el lenguaje oral, introducir el sistema o hacerlo desde el inicio de forma paralela. Esa es la primera pregunta. Gracias. Uh, that's a, that's a great question. We have not um, used uh, the PACT method with augmented communication. Um, but in principle, what I would say is that I think the, 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 the key uh, gain that we get from this PACT method is a, uh, for children at all levels of development, whether they have... Um, uh, verbal or non-verbal, um, it doesn't matter. We're working independent of language here. So what we're working on is core interaction relatedness and social motivation and social engagement. Whether that social engagement is non-verbal or 
partially verbal or, or fully verbal, if you like. We're working with the pragmatics of the social communication and social engagement. Um, and that, to me, is a foundational experience for a child. And what I would, in theory, um, predict or, or recommend is that this kind of approach to establish that core um, uh, sort of social engagement, if I could put it like that, um, is um, uh, really a primary um, goal. And then that makes a lot of later learning much, much easier. And I think then would be after that initial engagement in the PAC method and the improvement in social motivation and uh, engagement, then I would introduce um, augmented communication. Um, but I, I would have to, I would say as well that I think augmented for the nonverbal child, um, augmented communication, for instance, with with um, uh, you know speech computers, uh, etc., um, can be uh, and and even even a sort of PECS approach, but particularly with the the new computer aided approaches, are tremendously motivating for kids. And uh, so I would be very positive about them, uh, but I would build them on the core, uh, if you like, packed achievement of this um, sense of social engagement that the child feels they are being uh, attended to, um, uh, understood and responded to. And then you put the augmented communication in afterwards. I think that would be my thought. Muchas gracias. Y la otra pregunta eh, tiene que ver con, eh, bueno, en España se ha estado llevando un proceso de transformación de la, de la atención temprana con McWilliam y se trabaja mucho con un enfoque basado en las rutinas. Entonces, cuando has hablado de esos 30 minutos que se, que se les pide de práctica diaria, ¿se podría meter dentro de una rutina o es un momento como más especial? Es decir, que... El, el peligro que yo veo es que la familia lo sienta como un momento que tienen que trabajar y tienen que hacer algo especial y sientan presión, si no lo hago no estoy interviniendo. Entonces, ¿se podría buscar con ellos cuándo les encaja mejor dentro de su rutina para que sea una práctica más natural? No sé si me he explicado. Gracias. Uh, yes, well, it hopefully does become part of a natural routine in the family. Um, but the content of what we ask the parents to do during that half an hour is very tied to what we are doing in the packed sessions with the therapist. So essentially what the parent is doing is rehearsing and um, practicing uh, or putting into practice uh, things that have been worked out with the therapist in the session. So they're quite specific. Uh, and what the therapist does at the end of a session is to um, write down for the parent um, some areas of attention and goals that they agree together. And these are written down for the next couple of weeks before the next session. Um, and so the parent then knows what they're going away to kind of work on in relation to the therapy sessions. So the content, and that obviously changes as the therapy moves on. And then when the parent comes back for the next session, they um, report back to the therapist. The therapist is interested in how things have gone, um, if they've gone well or if there have been any problems, etc. And then they'll incorporate that into the next therapy work. So you can see that what we are wanting in those half an hour slots is, is very much part of the whole therapy process in terms of the content. But, you know, in a sense, what all we're asking is that the parent spends 30 minutes a day with their child without doing anything else, without talking on the phone or without watching the television or without, you know, I don't know, whatever. And that 
focused time is something that is good for any family. Um, and uh, the parents really value that, having that special time with their child, obviously. Um, we understand families are complicated. There are siblings, there's disruption, uh, there are jobs, etc. But this is, you know, it's not like a, um, we understand if it's been difficult, but that's the ideal. That's what we're trying for, this focused dietic time with the child that any parent in any family with any child would find good. The last, the last question is about uh, training, how they can uh, get a, a, a workshop about training back. So here we are very lucky because we have two Spanish trainers. <laughs> so, but people are very interested in, so they ask me for training. Yes, well, um, it's, um, it's true that uh, both uh, Carmen and uh, Julia, who I know are at the conference, and I'm, again, sorry I can't be with you in person, but Carmen and Julia are, are two of our packed international PAC trainers who do a lot of work in Spain um, and they'll identify themselves to you in the conference and will be um, able to um, tell you if, if you're in, in the Spanish context, they will be the best people to talk to about training in Spain um, uh, because they know the local situation, PAC is translated into Spanish and uh, Julia and uh, Carmen are the people to talk to about that, and I'm sure they'll wave their hands and identify themselves to you so you can talk to them directly. But uh, within the overall training organization for PACT, which is quite well developed now, uh, we train in um, 24, well, we have trained in 24 countries around the world, um, and um, a lot of the training is now online because of what we had to do for COVID and that, and we found that the, um, the online training is actually extremely effective. Um, like many therapists have found, the online method, uh, uh, people were a bit worried whether it would work, but actually it's, it's worked very well. And that's been, of course, true across uh, psychological therapies. So we do a lot of online work, both treatment delivery, uh, but also online training. And what this means is that we can run trainings um, across country, of course, uh, um, as long as the language is, the, um, is common. Um, we run trainings internationally from um, UK. Uh, so for the Spanish context, please talk to Carmen and Julia, who, who I know are there. Um, and, um, you know, wider, um, we, um, you know, just contact me. And um, I, in my last slide, I put up a contact detail for the PAC training organization. Um, Julia and Carmen will be able to give you that because they're part of it. Um, and we run on, and you, you know, you can join online courses that we run as well, uh, but we only run them in English. So if you want one in Spanish, it's, um, it's uh, Julia and Carmen. Um, but for instance, someone mentioned Portugal. Um, we're currently actually, we've done training in Portugal, uh, it's not Portugal, sorry, um, Brazil, uh, South America. Um, we've, um, we've done uh, quite a lot of training in South America and there is a quite a big trial currently ongoing of PACT um, in South America, in Brazil. So um, yeah, those two possibilities are definitely there and um, I'd be pleased to pass you on to the training organization if anyone's interested. Okay, um, Jonathan, we don't want to hold you any longer. Um, we, we know the, the effort that you <laughs> had to make to, to be with us. So thank you very much and get well soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Very good to be with you. And thank you for very, very good questions um, and your engagement. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.